Okay, so today I'm going to have a little look at um, setting up your speakers because we've done pretty much everything else. Um, so a little bit of background, okay? We've got um, two speakers here. This is a Mackie, this is an H and K, and basically they're very similar. But this one is a mid top. You've got uh, a compression, two inch compression driver there. You've got a mid range driver there, and then at the bottom we've got a subwoofer, okay? And that is gonna bring out your bass sounds. So this one is gonna bring out frequencies of about probably 1K and above to 20. This one is probably gonna be sort of below sort of 1K and down to say 500 Hertz, we're gonna get that down to because most of the times I run on a crossover and then this one will go down uh, anything below, kick out of, of sort of 150 hertz. Okay, so a little bit of background then. So we've got speaker impedance you need to worry about. We've got two different types of ways of powering these speakers. Um, the first way that I'm going to show you today is you've got passive and you've got active. We've got active here today. Passive is when you need an amplifier, okay, to power your speaker drivers. And then active is where you've actually got an inbuilt um, amplifier uh, inside the speaker unit itself. And you will have to have a power lead to each speaker. Um, it's sort of pretty much the same really. They don't make any difference Although the only advantage that I can see, if you're buying um, a, a powered speaker, then this usually means that it is built for those drivers. So we need to learn a little bit about speaker impedance. So speaker impedance is the load or the resistance that the amplifier will undertake um, when it sees your speaker and it's driving them. Okay, and speakers come built in different sort of impedances or resistances. Um, usually 16 ohms or 8 ohms or 4 ohms. And then we've got, these are 8 I think, and then we've got um, <coughs> generally the lower the impedance, the more efficient the speaker is because it's not putting too much of a strain on your power amp. And then when you hook up two speakers, the same impedance in parallel, the impedance drops by half, okay? And then when you put them and hook them up the same impedance in series, you've got the impedance double. So you've got the parallel or you've got in series, okay? We're gonna have a little look now um, around here and show you how these are. The camera comes round and zooms in on that. And there are your two um, ways of doing it. So we've got the power amp doing the two different drivers there on parallel to your left and that will be a 4 ohm load and then if you do it exactly the same speakers, the same amp and you do it, wire it up in series you're going to double that load to 16 ohms. Okay, so now we're going to crack on with doing everything else and um, I just wanted to show you one last thing on here which is a speaker driver itself so here we've got the main driver and you can see it's nicely labelled there this is off of one of my lectures actually and we've basically got the magnet at the bottom surrounding the voice coil which inside the voice coil is another magnet um, so it's just a screen turning off on my laptop and then on top of that we've got the dust cap and then we've got the diaphragm which is usually made out of paper sometimes aluminium or sort of paper pulp on subwoofers where it needs to be a lot sort of more stronger and it's a lot more flexier 
in sort of mid drivers and high end drivers. And then we've got the spider at the inside and the basket. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes on larger speakers you have the suspension rubber ring around the outside which holds in place and allows movement for the diaphragm. Okay, so I'm now going to have a little look by the way, at plugging this sort of stuff in. So, as I said, these are actually um, powered speakers and you just use ICA you need to plug in. And then we've got another one here for the sub. Now I'd usually recommend using the same make speakers um, and that one's already on for some strange reason I'm trying to look for the off switch, there we are ok, so I'd, I'd recommend using the same and uh, there we go we've got some sound going to be running through there but before we do that We've got a wire in uh, mains, and we've just got out of the desk, and you always go into your sub drivers first at the bottom. Now these are slightly different. Here we've got a line in, and then these XLR cables are the best ones to use because they have a ground or a third cable, which is your third pin. Okay, and that takes away other frequencies and if you have it close to an electronic cable it sort of helps to ground it and take away any unwanted signals. And then in some subs and some speakers we have a high pass out which will only let out anything above sort of 125 hertz but it doesn't matter because we've got full range on this lovely H and K and then we're into the input of that one we've got our the pots there to turn it up and the gain pot on there on the sub always turn your amps or, or your, your units on first and then you turn your speaker drivers on switches and we turn the gains up to 0 dB that is recommended in the uh, instructions and there we are okay so now we're gonna try and uh, play some music out and one thing to also note is when you're playing audio through make sure that you actually have the correct DB, so make sure you PFL, otherwise you could be overdriving your speakers, so you make sure it's level to zero DB. That's how to set up some basic uh, speaker cabs. Thank you very much. Uh, see you after Christmas.